So this is all your brood right here. Okay. And so the thing about when it's, it's like 60, the tattoos are really soft. They'll start to kind of move a little bit slower. So they're right. Not be, I noticed they're a lot slower. They're not going to be so flighty. So here's a bee being born. So what I'm looking at is I want to look at her wings. Come on, girl. All right, they're a little... They're okay. They're good. They looked a little bit deformed, which would be triggering for mites, which is that time of the year. Oh, okay. Um, typically, I try to be treatment-free unless there's a serious problem. Okay, but um, that baby looks okay. Yes. So it's definitely gonna feed. <laughs> Oh, there's your thing right there. No, I'll probably have a pollen feeder set out, like across the street. Okay. Um, they'll probably, find, this rain will probably help trigger that anyway. <laughs> so Get back up really quick. Are you okay? He's on my, look, why are they there? They're on the outside. Okay. So they, <laughs> you're so cute. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Why are they there? So bees. Why did they sit there? Oh my so gosh. They typically go towards the face because they can see the carbon dioxide from the, the mouth breathing out. So when they attack like a bear or some kind of animal, probably should be enough. Um, typically the belly. <laughs> Uh, it's far enough away, right? My face? Yeah, yeah you're like good. If you, if you, uh, um, why is it brown? Is this supposed to be like that? I don't know. Oh, God. Okay. So this has molasses in it. Oh, is that not right? It's technically not, but we're going to use it anyways. Sorry, I hope you don't have plans somewhere after because you can smell like a smoker. <laughs> but like a campfire smoker at least. So yeah, so what I do during so around November. Well, October, November is usually when I start consolidating stuff down. Now we're supposed to get some rain here, so that okay. I mean like I may leave boxes on through October. And then once November comes, I minimize stuff down. Okay. And then I start mouse camp feeding. And so the bees won't actually take liquid feed in the winter. And the other thing is if the honey is too far away, they can't get to it. They won't break their cluster of heat to, you know, come all the way up heat, you know, wherever the honey is. Um, and so what I do is I put a piece of newspaper right here and just regular granulated sugar I put it right over the top oh yeah these guys are I'm probably gonna take that box off today okay why um just because the, these frames are kind of empty whereas those frames in that bottom box were full oh, this is just okay. a lot more space for them to have to like keep too much an eye space on. for yep, them to exactly and so we'll take that box off and we'll probably not put it back on this year we'll probably right first thing in like March so I put regular dry granulated sugar, and that sugar will actually soak up any extra moisture. The bees, oh, there's all your brood right here. So when the bees cluster, they create condensation. That sugar will suck that condensation up, ultimately creating a candy, and then the bees will eat that, you know, because if the honey's too far away, they won't get it. But I can tell right now, these guys are hungry. These guys don't have a lot. And so I'm going to feed them, but I'm also going to share honey with them from another stronger hive. Brood's looking good though. But yeah, they're definitely hungry, so me. Shake those bees out. Put this on. We'll feed these guys last after we give them honey though. So if there's bees left in here. We're gonna shake them out. Okay. In, in the front, but so, a couple might. We'll we'll and make sure they're. Will all they know where to go? Food. They'll figure it out. Figure but it as out. long as they're not in the car with you. Okay. <laughs> I don't want them in the car with me. That I don't need. I don't want you to have to deal with. 
deal with that. Like me, I deal with that all the time. <laughs> no bees in the car with me. <laughs> I, it happens. You'll get stung in the face while you're driving. Oh no. And, um, and so I have my four ways on and like looking from here, I have pretty tinted windows, but you could see like through like the passenger. You can, and, and especially the windshield, bop, 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 like all these bees flying oh, around. No. And people, I'm gonna borrow this for one second. Yeah. People are like stopping, like staring. <laughs> oh my God. I'm... But yeah, that's the story of it. <laughs> kind of consolidate this. You're probably gonna find the ones on the end are probably a little bit uh, stronger, but it does seem like, it seems like it goes from here and it gets stronger as we go along the lines. I wonder why um, that is. You know, who knows? I I purposely set this up so they weren't in a straight line for to curb um, drifting. Like, you know, because sometimes if they come back and they all look the same, they may go to a hive that looks similar. But I don't, you also have all different color boxes, so those bees easily can find. Oh, so what they color. know their color. Yes. They do recognize shapes and colors. Every other brood looks good. Everything's looking good. They're just not a lot coming in right now. That's why we're feeding. Okay. Honestly, hopefully this rain really, because there's so much, these are all mesquite trees right here. And so they put off a lot of nectar. Populations are good though, so that's good going into winter. Mm. They could also be a little bit feisty just because, you know, there's not a ton of resources, so they're more aggressive about their food. Okay. Here's all your bird right here. Honey a little bit over here. Again, not a ton of nectar right now, and especially if it's going to rain for the next couple days. Um, I want to make sure. Okay, so I need to bump this back end up. You see how the water piles up right there from that rain? Oh, yeah, I see. So we're going to just bump it up in the back. That way it doesn't pool up and like potentially drown bees. Okay. But I seen that when you're looking down, I always empty it. Yeah, more brood means more mouths to feed. So they're gonna go through a lot more of the sugar syrup. And like I said, hopefully it's supposed to rain tomorrow and through the weekend out here. So. Okay, that's good. So if we come up here other times that you're not here, what should we do or I what? I would probably have you put out. Obviously, because I don't want you to be out of your comfort zone and, and if something happens, yeah. you know, if you're calling, I'm, I'm an hour and a half away, you know? Right. Um, so I won't have you do anything that, but if anything, I might have you put like a, come like a communal feeder out. So it's a, like a open feeder. Um, and then you'll basically just put sugar water in that and like a chicken feeder put rocks in there and then um because the bees cannot obviously swim and right why we put this in here um but we'll have to put it a ways away so if we do that i'll have you probably put it sugar feeder they will fight over so oh. like have probably them, they, where that big tree is over there by that cactus okay that probably should be far enough away um because they are, that way we don't we don't want them to start robbing each other out. So this one I'm probably gonna take off next month too. So when I'm opening, you see how they're like sprawled across the mm -hmm. frames? That's what I'm looking at as population. Because if I came in and they're only like on three frames, that's when I'm like, okay, I'm taking that box away now. I am definitely for the yellow one. Okay. I'll, sh I'll shake all those bees out again. <laughs> Listen, you guys need to be on your good behavior for your mom. I will say, in the winter, it's nicer because, yeah, they just stay on the frame. <laughs> so when it when it, it does get cold, like, you know, in, in December, January, what I do is I'll either shoot thermal so I can see inside, the heat inside, 
where I feed a camera in there, but I put that dry sugar over here. Put, I put, I'm gonna put pollen this year on it too. Um, and I reapply as needed. This year I'm gonna do something, I'm, I think I'm gonna do something different and get this reflective wrapping and just wrap hives, just as a windbreak. It doesn't really oh, okay. do much, but that way, because we're out here, it's just open field. Right. And it gets way colder out here mm -hmm. than it does in, in Round Rock for sure. So should we do anything like Sometime in the year, throw out like wildflower flower seeds. Or yeah, no, anything. completely. You know, that's always, always something I highly recommend. Um, that probably I don't really know the best time of the year per se to do that. Why are y'all right there? Yeah, why are there a bunch right there? Usually, when they get wet, they kind of just get stuck. It's like they're all wanting to be over there. It could be another entrance that they've made. So now that's where they... Because they got a front door and a back door. Mm -hmm. And some of them have just front doors. I think like that green hive actually. Here too. That must... There's another door. So I'm going to take this box off. So you see how they're just on those three frames? Mm -hmm. So we're going to take that box off. Just some light on food, but that's not our normal right now. We've been in a drought, you know. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's one. They only got one frame of fruit, so definitely gonna take that box off. Bees have their own smell to their own house, so they know where to. Where, unless you're constantly feeding sugar syrup, which then you're just making honey that's sugar syrup, not like real nectar. Exactly. One will find the entrance and then they'll release the smell and the other ones will just kind of march right in. Yep, they're mad. I just don't like it when they go on my face. Especially if you're not used to it. Yeah. yeah you're... Well, cause then they look like- go and you can see it, if you see its legs, it's to the opposite. If you see its wings, then you're like, oh, wait a second, that's, that's in. Yeah. <laughs> well, they better not be in. <laughs> you feel any better i'll be if they're in i'm gonna be running you'll see me running to the car Whatever screaming do, don't whip the suit off don't you don't not until you're, like, you're safe in the car because if they do sting you in the face it releases the pheromone when the rest want to sting you in the face oh but i'm the one getting stung right now so i, mean, I was gonna you're getting stung oh it happens <laughs> Need some Benadryl? No, I don't. I have I have stuff in the car. Do you need an EpiPen? I have all that. On average, honestly, probably like six or seven times a day. But if you times that times five days a week, you know that's. Well, it's almost like you're getting allergy shots. Essentially. So are they biting you through your your? They can sting through these, but they're kind of crawling up here. But this suit is just. This suit's old and, and kind of tall. Do they ever start learning or they're just always having so many new babies that they don't learn that, like, you're here to help them? Um, they, yes and no. The thing is, is they live 40 days and they were okay, then 21 they... days. So typically, I'd imagine... Maybe a third of them yeah. might remember you next trip. Exactly. But again, you know, the thing is, is... This, out of here. this is the artificial queen cup. Oh, Basically, cool. when you're rearing a queen, uh, before she emerges, you'll pop this in, and then mm -hmm. she emerges inside the hive. And uh, oh, that's something you put in? No, it's what the oh. breeder does when we buy them. Uh, yeah, it's just a it's a queen that hasn't been born yet, and then it's born inside the hive. So they come in the nukes. Uh, most people, that's how they they raise nukes. Is... They're really mad. Yeah. No, no, you're good. You just stay back there. <laughs> I gotta keep them off of me. You're good though, right? Yeah. I'm just like, they're all, I don't like seeing them. Attack your phone. 
No, they're more like all around here. <laughs> I may have you probably get a sign. Uh, it's just a, you don't even have to buy it. You can make it and you're really crafty. So, but, um, it's basically just a sign that, you know, the laws, it says law something, something. The bees are livestock. Basically, if somebody comes over here like, oh yeah, I want to check your bees out and they get stung in the face and have to go in the hospital, you're not liable for that. Hives just have their own personality. Why they do something, you know, I, who knows? <laughs> like attitude -wise. Right, those were really bad. <laughs> and you're gonna see, you're gonna be able to tell like, which hives you're like, wow, they're really sweet and which hives, they're like kids. You know? Each one has its own yeah. personality. I will so say though, the more like aggressive they become, <laughs> they are at like against mice, against other, you know, other things trying to attack them. Um, typically better at producing. So how could you guarantee that you have like calm bees that you could work with without a suit? <laughs> oh. In Texas, you just can't. You're really monitoring them, not to swarm, because once they swarm and they raise a new queen, that queen has to mate. And if she opened mates with Africanized grown <laughs> genetics, that's how you can pretty much guarantee that you're getting Oh, so them. you'd have to be out here almost every day to um, check on them. And... You really would, yeah. Well, you wouldn't want to go to the hive, in the hive every single day. You'd probably want to be doing like... That's why I try to let bees just do what they, they do. And... So you haven't got... No. But, like, that's why they're going after my arms, which is fine. I'd rather them be going after them. Hopefully you'll start having, uh, let me have you bring pollen out next time. Okay. I'll put that in the report. Okay. So it just really depends on what the, the fall brings. Exactly. Let's take these bees out over there. Over there. In case there's a rogue one.